Namaste, Star Family. Welcome back to the Matrix Oracle. This is a pick a card reading in honor of the sun entering Sagittarius. What we're going to channel is a message about your spiritual path. You're going to be able to choose according to a card or also your zodiac sign. Uh, you might have one or more messages. It's up to you to tune into your intuition. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so we have already two piles, so pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. That was on top. I'm going to give you the word, the key word of the card. This is focus. Ooh, never pulled this one. Love it. Pile number two, we have generosity. I've actually, I've never met those little kitty <laughs> before. And this is all unconditional love. Wonderful. So three piles. And now let's associate the zodiac sign. Um, because it's a sun reading, I would suggest your sun placement. Okay. All right. So pile number one, we have a Scorpio. We have Libra, we have Aquarius, and we have Leo. Beautiful. Pile number two, we have Capricorn. We have Cancer. We have Pisces. And we have Aries. Pile number three, we have Virgo. Sagittarius. Taurus and Gemini. Okay, there you are. One, two, or three. I will see you there for your message about your spiritual path. Hi, pile number one. Welcome to your message about your spiritual path. If you chose this card, this little cat is called Focus. Actually, the energy is Focus, but its name is Artemis. She is the master of hunter she can focus her attention like a laser beam she has crystal clear vision and razor sharp hearing she even has some extra antenna that can pick up on subtle clues she observes everything knows how to be invisible and leaps out at the perfect moment we often have a zillion ideas floating in our minds we are multitasking machines, but when Artemis shows up, it is time to pick up one thing, to hone it and quell distractions. How will we ever catch that mouse if we don't focus on it, letting everything else fade into the background for the moment? Wow. Okay, so <laughs> there's something here for you, pile number one. Um that you need to focus on. We're going to get some cards about this. If you chose according to your zodiac sign, we have Scorpio, we have Leo, we have Aquarius, and we have Libra. I'm going to put them on the side. Okay. I feel that, okay, for the focus, I wanted to get the Sweet Dream deck card. Let's see what this card, I, I, it kind of stayed <laughs> with the on the ground, on the table, while I was trying to shift it. Okay, let's see what it says. Explore. I explore new horizons as I follow my passion. Now is the time to move forward. Okay. You know what's interesting here is that it really feels like Sagittarius um, momentum. This is associated with the ninth house energy. It's about getting out of your comfort zone. Some of you, maybe there's been a lack of focus towards your goals or your dreams because you were afraid they wouldn't manifest or lacked the confidence or lacked the organization, the space. There's something here. I feel there's another card, though, with a sweet dream. Mm, let's see. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I 
I do disagree. You know, I travel the world and the seven seas. I feel as some of you, uh, you may have this nomad, gypsy type of soul. Um, maybe you have ninth house placements that are coming into play. If that's the case, if you have, let's say, for example, mm, your moon in the ninth house. I didn't say what zodiac sign, but I would suggest to watch the latest moon reading, okay, to connect some of the dots. Connect the planets, pick a card to where you have your personal placement in the ninth house. It's not going to be for everyone, okay? Some of you, by the way, I want to um, share that if you were born in a certain location and you moved and you're not living in the same one, you might want to look at what is called your relocation chart because that will put different... The, well, I mean, the, the secret geometry stays the same, but it shifts the house system. You're exploring the same... Uh, the different topics with the same uh, placement of the zodiac, just different theme of life, okay? I feel as some of you, if you have questions, you can always send me an email, I am the matrix oracle at gmail.com, if you have questions or comment below. Connect. I create strong emotional connections with the important people in my life. I feel it right now, pile number one, the message about your spiritual path, is very much connected to exploring your connections to others, exploring getting out of your comfort zone. Um, in that sense, there might be something that you need or are ready to share. That ninth house energy, very spiritual. There might be something that it is time for you to share with the world. It could be a project. It could be a dream. It is definitely a certain vision. Are some of you kind of, um, you know, um, delaying that or we're waiting for that sign? If you were waiting for a sign from the universe to get going with a certain dream, Okay, it might be something that is taking bigger shape and bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, it might be something that you saw as a beginning of, oh, that would be nice if dot dot dot, and then it starts to expand more and more. It's time to let that desire expand the field. There might be, you know, what I feel, especially as I'm channeling this, um, the week where we have Pluto finally entering Aquarius, okay? There might be just soul contracts. There are people that are waiting for you to take that leap of faith. And your leap of faith is actually your leap in focus, dedicating and devoting yourself to a certain uh, path. Yes. If some of you haven't watched this, okay, I'm going to put it in your description box. You might find it both, for sure, everything that I mentioned will be in the description box. And sometimes I can list it there. I have a certain amount before <laughs> YouTube tells me enough. <laughs> but I'm going to list the Pluto Aquarius um, pick a card. Because some of you, your vibration and what you're meant to birth is part of some soul contracts. People are waiting for you to get out of your comfort zone, out of that box, uh, especially through Sagittarius season. You've shed a lot of the past. Some of you, you may have integrated some shadow aspects, um, ended some karmic patterns. Now it's a time to focus towards this vision, this dream. Now, you know what? When I'm looking at the image, yeah, it will be on the other side, yeah. I don't know if it's a mirror effect. I don't know if it's looking out or it's looking in. But you know what? I'm going to trust... <laughs> I'm going to trust how everything is set. Okay. Whoop. All right. We've got one card here. Messages about your spiritual path. A message from your spiritual path. Mm -hmm. And another one.
By the way, everyone, thank you so much for being so interactive in the latest readings. It's been just so fun. I would say for you, pile number one, if you know that you have a dream that you want to manifest and you know it's time and that you are ready to commit to it, drop me a third eye. Drop down in the comment below a third eye as a way to claim the beginning of whatever it is that you are envisioning you know i really feel like there's some material things that you concrete things that you are meant to do through sagittarius season you are not <laughs> Jeez. okay all right it's interesting because this speaks, you know, when you manifest and you have a vision, you have to focus your intention and put your emotions into it. But then you have to also unfocus. You have to let the universe do its magic. So things come together. They connect together. But it is asking of you to laser focus on a certain vision, work with the unseen, it is a time, like I told you, like, like if you're like amazed with me, like drop me that third eye. <laughs> the holy mountain with the number 25. The number, the cards in many decks with the number 25 has been coming up a lot. And some of you, if you haven't heard me say it before, number 25 in the angles of the zodiac is about magic. It's about working with the elements of the universe. And in this case, especially with the mountain, the ether, working with magic, you are magic. You are a vibrational being that is constituted of all five elements of this universe. And you are meant through this phase to focus your energy on something that for now hasn't been seen. It might have been seen uh, flashes of, of, of moments that are part of that vision, that manifestation, but it's time for you to, you know, focus is also putting your desire, your emotions into it. We're going to see here, wow, unleash your creativity, put all your, this is like life force energy, this is your creativity, this is kundalini energy, it's all in. Some of you, if you needed to hear this in Sagittarius season, it's time to take that leap of faith, uh, look at this, the clock, when I said it's time, there might be also another a message from Saturn, okay, there was a Saturn in Pisces going finally direct in Pisces. There might be something about divine timing that you need to hear at this time. I had something else that came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some of you also, I remember that there was some messages for Mars in Leo about Kundalini, Okay. And I know I'm listing a lot of messages, but some of you, what I'm suggesting, because this is like a season, it's a season to be jolly. <laughs> what? Audrey. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a lot. It's like, uh, remember in this card, uh, being highly clairaudient, there was like hyper senses. Some of you, you can sense through the ether through your spiritual connection, that some of your dreams are starting to take shape, okay? You probably have de de dedicated already some time to it, especially it's the first time that I'm seeing her with some type of tool here. I think it's a clench, you call it in English? I'm not sure, but a tool, okay? Some of you, maybe there are tools that you've been working with for manifestation. Some of you, you could be uh, manifesting coaches, mindset coaches, uh, any type of coaching or any type of even focus, you know, manifesting your dreams. Oh yeah. Um, I do feel the energy and it's, it came up also in the Pluto in Aquarius, the book Think and Grow Rich, and I'm going to list it. Okay. In 
the description box below because I feel that some of you, if you've never heard about working with your central kundalini life force energy to manifest, it is time for you to start learning about this. This is a beginning. This seems like a, a beginning after Scorpio season and now entering Sagittarius where you've had to face certain shadows, had to face certain um, parts of yourself that had to unbecome, let them go. It's not you. It's not, uh, you're not that label. You're not your wound. You're not uh, that trauma. Um, you're now being reborn and there's this refreshed energy that wants to come through this phase. But it seems that there's, you know, a need to get organized, a need to get um, things going, things started. Let's get it started. Ha. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see if we have through the tarot some more messages about this. Can we get some more messages for pile number one about this venture? <clears throat> adventure. I feel like some of you, it's an adventure. Maybe you have a uh, sign up on this you know, on this uh, earth for a mission where you were uh, perfecting the art of manifestation, understanding the laws of the universe, in particular, I would say the law of attraction. Okay. Some of you go and we're, the law of attraction is going to come up as a healing, um, as a healing tool. Remember? We talked about the tool. Whoa. The sun. What I'm feeling here also for you, as far as your spiritual path, some of you with this energy, there's some type of leadership in um, the spiritual aspect or coaching, um, being a way shower, being someone that has a certain topic, a certain focus. There's a certain topic, a certain uh, theme, a certain tool, a certain creation, a certain invention. It's a unique thing that is yours, that is meant to be born in this lifetime. It's supposed to also bring you good luck. It says here, triumph, bliss, hard work creates good luck. Be dedicated be organized. You see, hard work creating good luck. It's your focus. You're focusing on this. Beautiful. Wow. The Ace of Swords. Conquest. Clear vision. Discernment. And last but not least, there's another card here. Okay. The Knight of Swords. Courage in action. Best of intentions. go <laughs> let's go let's go okay with the f word <laughs> some of you you'll uh understand <laughs> i know i know the ones that understand uh courage in action best of intention put all your efforts in it okay part of your spiritual path and the things that you've discovered about yourself you know some of you you may have started uh, a hobby that is now turning into an, uh, an income. There's a certain vision that you have, a certain, you know, I, 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 some of my clients are like sharing with me, like the things they've been studying, the careers they've been started, um, the, 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 the other things that they want to study along the path. There's just like a lot that is being unleashed. And that's something you need to hear because this Sagittarius season, pile number one, you're going to be needing to put all your focus. It seems that the alignment of the stars are highly supportive of you birthing this project of yours. You know what I'm feeling? And it's not going to resonate with everyone. But I would say if you have first house placement, okay, or if you were, because we mentioned this about relocation, if some of you have 
certain planets that when you relocate are now in the first house. This is the house of the womb. Your project is intimately connected to the planets that happen to be in that first house, okay? So if some of you haven't moved, there's something about that first house placement. And some of you, you might not realize you have first house placement. I know, for example, for me, it took me a while to like kind of like fully acknowledge that I had my south node in the first house because in most charts, it doesn't appear, or at least in the, in, in the thing that I'm using uh, currently, the website. Uh, then I discovered I had the muse of astrology in the first house. So there's, there's certain things, some of you, it might not be obvious to the eye, okay? Some of you are part of the YouTube star family, the goddess and starseed level. You have access to all the muses of astrology. That means like theater, um, that means history, what you're known for, um, poetry, writing skills, spirituality. There, there's certain um, new ones that are coming up shortly on the channel. And you have also access to the goddesses. So some of you know this. There's a connection to the womb, to your natal chart, something that you were always meant to birth. It could be already in your chart if you haven't moved, or some of you also, it could be connected when you relocate. That puts the planets in that house of the womb, okay? There's a creation. That's a clue for some of you, okay? It seems that because it's unseen, because we're tapping to a collective of people, I'm trying to give you clues so you can find some deeper guidance, you know, more catered gu guidance, but with the Ace of Sword, and especially the Hawk, vision, focused vision, hard work that creates good luck, the unseen and the unleashing of, of, of your creativity and you going after it, that's the time. And you know what I'm, um, <laughs> I'm thinking about is that cartoon with the Roadrunner. Beep, beep. <laughs> I don't know the noise that he makes, but, um, and the coyote, the coyote in most animal decks or just as a spirit animal is about divine detours. It's about like the things there's, there's a lot of detours you had to take, but now it's time to go after this dream, that dream that you may have explored before, but now is the time to connect all your energy, all your life force, all your focused vision to make that appear for you. That's what I have, my dear pile number one. How exciting. I'm sending you many blessings and much love and light. Namaste. Oh, and please remember those little thumbs up. They make me so happy and it helps the channel to grow. <laughs> Namaste. Pile number one. <laughs> I thought I was done, but as I was putting everything over, I realized that the law of attraction and sacred union frequency had come up. And what I'm going to give you is that whenever you're putting your focus and you're starting to write your goals, your dreams, and you're putting uh, your focus into it, if you feel any blocks, any fears, or any subconscious resistance, work with the law of attraction as a frequency. That's going to be your to-go because that's the frequency I created for exactly the purpose of when we go after a certain goal and we seem to actually repulse it because there's a certain energy block that keeps us from being naturally magnetized to that goal. And instead of feeling, you know, for example, if you have a lack of uh, self-confidence in a certain skill that you're in need to explore or something that you have to share, but it's the lifetime where you're sharing that skill and you're coming up with this vision, um, that's going to help you because if there's any feeling of lack or I'm not enough or things that are in opposition with your desired goal, this is going to be your frequency. I felt I didn't care. I hopefully people didn't click off and are getting this part of the message, but I'm going to list it anyways in the video description. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> Cut! Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your message about your spiritual path. Uh, you have the beautiful card of generosity. And let's read now the um, content. It says, meet Sapphire, the generous spirit in us all. When it is dark outside, he will always come through for us with his dancing rainbow lights and gentle eyes. Allow generosity to flow in all directions. Offer your hand, your ear, your understanding, and your heart to a person in need. Graciously receive the help from another when you are challenged, stuck, or down on your luck. Be generous with yourself. Give yourself time, love, and sweet nurturing care. We take turns being the helper and the one in need of help. Generosity connects us to something larger than ourselves. If you chose according to your zodiac placement, especially your sun placement, Capricorn, Cancer, Pisces, and Aries. I have a quote. And I can't... I, I haven't used it in the past. And it's not a popular, common one. But I'm going to share it as well as I can remember the concept, which says the last level of your healing is to put that healing into supporting and helping others. Look at my hands creating this heart that I didn't expect. <laughs> so I feel that's the, that's the essence of that quote. It's not those exact words, but I feel that this is the theme, the essence for you, pile number two, the healing you've done, the times where you were able and humble to ask for help. There's going to be some type of reciprocity from the universe. And if you still need some help, you will always receive it because you've started to honor this beautiful process. Okay. Okay. So let's get your cards. I feel a little emotional here. <laughs> it was swift, but I felt it. I have to be honest. Um, some of you, uh, maybe it's about acknowledging uh, how getting to this level of feeling whole and feeling self-loving and being able to self-care, how it was not like a given, you know, it was not easy. Some of you, I can feel that. And Sagittarius season feels like a time for reward. It does. I feel I just want to look at those cards first. Ooh, whoa, okay. The lover. It's not going to be for everyone, but some of you, if you're looking, if you're single and you're looking for a relationship, it's definitely a sign that you have first addressed loving yourself so deeply that you're able to attract uh, a matching uh, relationship on that level, on that type of level. Now, the lover is that energy of yin and yang. So with the pearls energy, especially the gold, the gold is more connected to the masculine energy. I feel as some of you, you've been able to and we talked about like helping and receiving help. Um, so there's there's something about yin yang energy that is very strong and very beautiful that makes you um, radiate a certain glow where people might feel called to trust you with their own heart. Maybe some of you um, you are. I, I'm feeling like a caregiver type of energy. You could be a nurse. You could care give um you it doesn't have to be but this this very you could even just be a, a stay-at-home parent uh it has this very loving vibe that seems to matter for your spiritual path because that's what we're channeling the medicine wheel wow so what i love about this there's a certain and you remember how i said nurses <laughs> caregiver some of you you might be also in the medical field uh even if it is like holistic healing any type of healing of the soul and there's a merge you, you see how there's so many energies there's a serpent there's the eagle 
there is the I think it's a leopard or jaguar or ja uh, leopard sorry and a hummingbird so there's animal spirit some of you there might be shamanic ways that you used to be in alignment with your yin and your yang okay for you pile number um two i'm going to right away put the um yin yang playlist okay uh, on your your um description box or you'll find it up there yin yang playlist because it is just so important for you to stay in that feminine masculine balanced energy that's part of your spiritual path that's part of you receiving everything that is meant for you to receive to achieve and fulfill not just your earthly goals but your soul's oath that's something that is very dear to me this term your soul's oath that's something when i had my personal and spontaneous kundalini awakening i say i insist on the spontaneous because i knew nothing about this <laughs> and it just sprung on me um but it gave me a, a lot of access to knowledge very fast it was quite traumatic um but there was a lot that has been channeled and that i feel for you as well your process of awakening seems to matter for others as well and it's only through the application of those principles yin and yang how you use your intuition and your mental focus to manifest the life that you have the life that you're leading that is part of medicine some of you um you might you if you chose according to your sun placement uh, there's no sagittarius but one of the placement of Sagittarius speaks of medicine. So you might have some Sagittarius placement or ninth house placement in your chart. It doesn't have to be. But if that's the case, know that it is bringing an emphasis and a higher confirmation for you, pile number two. Okay, so let's move forward with this. I feel that when I said moving forward with this, that's something you've achieved and now there is this next level but it was important for you to acknowledge this remember how i was emotional at the beginning i felt it it was very swift but i could feel as some of you there was a lot of emotion that you had to go through wow i attract a loving happy fulfilling relationship into my life if some of you uh you are doubting this wow that is beautiful. I, for pile number one, we had the law of attraction and sacred union frequency uh, that came up. And that's something that you will find as a link below. If you are still feeling that you're in conflict with certain um, belief, like for example, if you're claiming you want to be in a relationship and you seem to not be able to manifest one, go and use this, this frequency. But I, I say that your work was highly focused on finding self-love, finding balance between yin and yang, feminine, masculine, shadow and light. And the medicine that you channel is going to be what leads you to attract everything that is part of your soul's fulfillment, your dream life. Okay. I don't know why, but for you, I am feeling the trend that I've seen. I haven't done it myself. Um, there was some type of AI prompt trend. And I'm not so fond of that uh, AI thing, but it has its purpose and it has its benefits. Um, but it was sharing, a. the prompt was about describing some of the goals and the visions and then asking according to how specific you want to be uh, on those goals and visions, a, a day in a life. I feel that some of you, if you have a hard time um, visualizing a day-to-day -day life in that space with all that you want to manifest, that could be a good uh, healing support, okay? And that's not for everyone, but I wanted to share it and I'm going to, I felt the shadow of the deck here. 
family and tribe. Some of you, you, this one just felt called also. And say what you mean. This feels very, some of you, maybe you had some um, past influence on how much you felt safe to express your true needs. Okay, there's something here that is about inheritance. You could have fourth house placement, seven or eight placement, especially if it's going to be the planet Mercury, that's going to be even greater or some type of Libra tension here. I feel tension in the relationships that are now being resolved. I want to, through this um, reading, tell you you're entering a different time. Because some of you, I can feel the emotions of how much you had to work on your self-love, your self-worth, finding this balance. And yet those shadows come back because a part of you needs to know that you're going to be able to choose your family and your tribe. You're going to be able to be in a space and place where what you share and what's on your heart and what's on your mind, you're not going to feel, I'm, I'm feeling like uh, dismissed, dismissed in your feelings. Some of you, there might have been some past uh, dynamic like that, that you inherited, that you were uh, part of as a child or growing up. This energy is moving away, okay? And that could be also part of what you're helping others in their healing. Throat chakra comes up. Uh, it could be in the field of therapy. It could be uh, family therapy, uh, couples therapy. There's definitely in you uh, a lot of that healing vibe. Remember, it's gener generosity. All that you've done for yourself is going to come back to you a 10 times fold. Yeah. And when I said that, it was on your portion of this recording, um, 1221. You're going to experience the mirror effect as above, so below, as within, so without, as the uh, universe, so is the soul. Okay. So what else? I feel like I want to put this to the side because that's phase one and you're into a new phase and you needed to hear this because part of spiritual growth and part of your spiritual path is to acknowledge all that you had to surmount. Now we have the Thanatos. In this card that has a web, we're going to see how it is supported, but I'm feeling more of the energy of a dream weaver, of a dream catcher. So let's see here with the more shamanic cards what we have. We have three cards in this one. You have a lot of um, ancestors supporting you here. Some of you, maybe you're bringing a, a holistic, ancient ways, the old ways. You know, I see sometimes... Um, uh, people, a lot of people starting to homestead, you know, going back, weaving back in time, things that uh, allow us to be more in alignment with nature, with Mother Earth. We have the blade. Beautiful. The crow. The drum. What are you, uh, some type of uh, <laughs> shaman? And the tree of life. Wow, pile number two. With this, it seems that you have, remember, you are highly inclined to bring some soul medicine. Through the cycles, continue right now. The message about your spiritual growth, that blade. Anything that needs to be cut and removed out of the way will come through the cycles of the moon. The moon is connected to your third eye, to your intuition. It's going to help you cut any cords to the past if any 
are lingering, but also being able to, you know, the blade is also like the ace of sword, is that sword energy, that truth. The truth that you hold is about the unseen. Maybe, sir, you know, that's like with the message that you had about therapy. It's like you're able to see certain patterns, certain entanglement that people are locked in, entangled in. And that's probably part of your spiritual path. But that means the same way you can break free from a matrix of a pattern, of a karma, of a karmic repetition. You're also able then to have the knowledge on how to build something new. You know, that's why people go to therapy or uh, people go through uh, certain ways of healing. You, energy doesn't die. You can d you remove certain energies, but that means there's going to be something else replaced by it. Okay, so th there's something here about the cycles of healing, the cycles of you coming into union, and that's something that you have to do with your yourself. The, the cycle also of, you know, remember, there was a lot of accent or emphasis on the word help. For some of you, maybe the help that you needed is the exact soul medicine that you're going to be able to weave into creation, into something that is part of your spiritual path. Let go. I release the old and embrace the new. I grow into my very best self. Okay? It seems with this second wave of um, message, some of you, it's not going to resonate, but some of you, if there's still some entanglement and things to let go of, Sagittarius season is the perfect time. But some of you, it is part of your spiritual path, the surrendering to the universe, the letting go of the old belief system, of the old emotions, the trauma, trauma resolution, trauma healing. You are just like such a soul uh, healer here, pile number two. That's, that's very strong, very, at a soul level, very shamanic. How teachable are you? There's maybe something here that you need to learn that will be something you teach. That's something that I experience on my spiritual journey and awakening. It's a lot of the things that I was able to share at some point, some of the gifts, some of the knowledge. I had to first go through the initiation of being taught. And some of you, there's certain things that are still in the process for Sagittarius season that you're reviewing. You know what? Before I started your reading, I did have a, a scratch in my throat. And I would say for you, maybe because there is that mer Mercury uh, retrograde that is upcoming. And if I'm not mistaken, it is in Sagittarius. Let me check that. If my phone is just here. Yes, it is. And it's coming up on the 25th of November. Okay, so as we're entering, so there's something here maybe about the repetition of your patterns. If that is the case, my dear ones, remember, work with the law of attraction, work with the yin and the yang. If you have a resistance to be teachable, uh, I would say you have to work with either the yang or the yin. The yin frequency will help you be more receptive. The yang will help you um, being more proactive with whatever you need. Or if you feel that you just want to go and act in more like react versus well-thought actions, 
you can rebalance your yang energy with just a yang frequency. If that's something that resonates, the pattern that I've used in the past was yang in the morning, yin yang midday, and then yin at night, just to support me to get into the flow. Okay. And I feel for you, you see cycles, drum, the crow, the mystery, there's a dance here that you're completing, that you're weaving. There is something that you want to manifest. What this card stayed. And if, look at what you have, ask for help. I am willing to receive help from the universe whenever and however it happens. Some of you, if that's the case, if there is something you're trying to manifest on your spiritual path, it was um, feel free to still be in that position where you can ask for help and support. Okay, because that's very strong here with that energy. Is there anything else? <sighs> yeah. There is. Five of Pentacles, dark night of the soul, loneliness, loss of home. What is going on? It's like, you know what? It feels like, are you going from one extreme to the other? Or is there, you know, the first... The first part of the message was so much about how well you've done. And then there was this doubt that started to instill in you. And it's been transpiring in the cards. Don't give it life. And, you know, the way that I support my channel and the people that connect to it is through sound. Some of you... That, the, the five of pentacles with that dark night of the soul, I would suggest to listen to your personal Chiron placement. This is something maybe you haven't addressed, is an ancient wound. And as much as you're able to channel this much healing and this much healing power to help others and help yourself, there's still a missing part. And this season is going to help you shine the light on it. Okay, I'm going to put this for you. Uh, the playlist for the Chiron Wounded Healer. Okay, and some of you, if you want to book a session, I'm going to put it uh, as well. Okay, I can, I can read your Chiron Wound if that's something that supports you. Because I have to offer it to you because that's something I feel as some of you the lack of awareness of what wounds you the most is keeping you in that, that wheel, okay? All right, now that we have mentioned this, once pile number two is able to step beyond this repetition and it knows it has so much wisdom about healing because of their own healing journey, what can we expect? Okay, well, you're going to want to um, take some time. We have this four of swords, quiet reflection, waiting till the time is right. You're going to want to wait a little bit. Okay, wait for your rest. <laughs> Six of wands, shining your inner light, moment of glory. Okay, uh, no one thing. What we're seeing here is a pattern that is common in the law of manifestation. When you're creating and you're putting so much effort, then there's this time for receiving the energy. The universe is saying, you know, um, as much energy you exert, you also have to create the space for you to receive the universe support. Some of you, if you have access to the YouTube star membership, so the YouTube membership on this channel, all levels. I am going to suggest the nervous system uh, recharge, okay? And some of you, if you uh, want instead, because you're not a member, I would say go and check out the astral body healing. 
The astral body is all of the emotional body. This is something I felt for some of you. Um, so thank you so much, pile number two. This is what I have for you. If you need support, please share, ask for help. Um, I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Um, but you're, you're really in a place where the universe wants to support that process. It wants to show you the teachable, how the same way you've been helping others and you, some, you know, a lot of the caregivers, the nurses, I see them and they're, a lot of them are part of my clients is the overgive. That overgiving is great. You learn a lot, but there's messages here through Sagittarius season that the universe wants to give back to you. And there's going to be a victory. There's going to be an elimination. There's going to be a moment where you're going to finally uh, shine from within out and everything that seemed unsure is going to finally make sense. Thank you so much, pile number two. I'm sending you so many blessings. And uh, remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Pile number three, welcome to your message about your spiritual path. You chose the beautiful card of the unconditional love. And if you chose according to your sun sign or any zodiac placement, we have Taurus, Virgo, Gemini, and Sagittarius. We're going to put them aside and read this card. It says, meet Eiko. She is soft being of pure love. She is a nest of comfort and compassion. She loves unconditionally and embraces fully without exception. She transmutes pain and failure into blessings and wisdom. When you feel vulnerable or self-doubting, she will engulf you in love and solace. She can see your supposed, supposed imperfections as mere beloved quirks. She salutes the true spirit in you. Love yourself as Aiko does and let that love spread outwards to your friends, family, and fellow human beings. Let go of judgments and love everyone just as they are. Wow, beautiful message. Feels very deep, very deep. There's a lot of messages about love. Um, pile number two had those type of messages. And, you know, the first person that needs and requires this love is you. The, it, this little ego <laughs> feels like she's meditating. Some of you, maybe um, Sagittarius season is a time for you to meditate on a certain dream. And I'm saying dream because I have the sweet dream card deck. Let's see what messages we have for you might be two here we have manifest my dreams help me to manifest all that i need so a lot of subconscious rewiring for you pile number three and then we have peace i create peace prosperity and joy in my life so are you trying to manifest an environment a life that feels in peaceful, loving. Maybe some of you, you come from a total opposite <laughs> of this. And this is your message here. That we're going to get some more details. But it feels like it's the beginning of a more peaceful time of life. More loving, harmonious relationships. We have... The Seven of Cups with dreams, but also deception and determination. Okay. Then we have, let me just move this a little bit. We have <laughs> two cards. Okay. And this is the Champazy. Two of Pentacles, balance, go with the flow and fun. And the snake, the tower, shocking change, transformation and liberation. Remember how I said that you come maybe from a total different 
experience. So some of you here with Sagittarius season, my dear pile number three, maybe you're dreaming about a more tranquil, serene space of living. Maybe even some of you are trying to manifest a new home. Um, something that feels more in alignment with your soul or the unconditional love that you have and hold for life, yourself and others and how you're envisioning this life on earth. With the snake in the tower energy, this is Mars energy. I already suggested to pile number one to look at the Mars in Leo. So you'll find it in the description box below. If that's something you want, there might be an energy here through the transit of Mars currently that could be part of a supportive message because that wave and pick a card is about kundalini messages so something with your life force what helps you and support your energy and i feel that some of you maybe work is into play here you might be trying to manifest a certain dream through your focus your determination but what i'm seeing and i'm going to tell you is that part of what has created um, the past could be still locked into your nervous system. So we want to make sure that we're healing those aspects of the self because otherwise we keep on attracting the same things. And we might not realize it because maybe we're thinking differently, but that doesn't mean that our emotional body has been healed. And I'm going to suggest another frequency that showed up for pile number two this time is the astral body healing frequency. Some of you feel that there's still some emotional healing that needs to occur. Please go through that process. Allow yourself to shed. It's interesting because, you know, the reel that I picked for Sagittarius season has this wise serpent energy in the body movement, but also in the quote that I'm using. There's certain wisdom, okay, um, that wants to support you here. Okay, the wisdom of your path and past. Okay, all right. Let's create more space. Creating more space. We have, ooh, Phoenix rising. What are you doing? Okay, uh, some of you, there could be something about um, working with alchemical principles or even just breath work that could be part of your routine that is highly supportive of changing the outcome or changing the matrix of the reality you've been stuck in, into, looped into, I'm hearing. Almost like weaved into. Ooh, when you start seeing your beauty, when you start seeing your beauty, the beauty that lies also within the experience of your life, you will start to alchemize. I feel that some of you, and that's something I suggested for, I think it was pile number two, yes, the Chiron wound. Um, that could be something that can support you um, looking at your natal placement of Chiron and then working with the mantra there because there is a, they're all working with gratitude mantra. And I feel as some of you, it's like you have to express this to yourself. I'm grateful for myself, for, for all that I am investing in. You know, your spiritual investment. I feel that some of you are highly um, inclined to spiritual devotion. You see another snake. Another snake energy. And home. Okay. Pile number three through Sagittarius season. It seems that, especially with love, unconditional love, peace, home, there's a return to your heart, the beauty. There's a return to uh, feeling the love that you are. Also manifesting, maybe some of you, a job that you love. There's something about trying to manifest, manifest, 
something different, very different, almost like so drastically different that you're wondering how you're going to do this. Well, you're on the right channel because um, if you resonate with sound healing and you're highly receptive to sound, it will shift your cells. It will sh shift your cellular water. And I would suggest even more so for you, pile number three, on top of everything else that I've shared. I'm going to write it down here. Um, the quantum fascia healing. It's a playlist that I have um, that will help you with um, all the memories stored in your cellular water. It's like, imagine like, the water has a structure with all the emotions that you've been rehearsing in your life. And it seems that they were probably very contrasted with the ones that you're trying to manifest. So you see how important it's going to be not to just shed the beliefs, but shed to, to the physical layer of yourself, to the cellular DNA layer of yourself. Okay, now that we heard this, Let's move on to the next layer of that message. For pile number three. I was going to say, can we have a message of love? Ooh, the ring. A promise. That's what I see with the ring, you know, promise ring, an engagement. Be engaged and fully invested in this process pile number three if you hesitated with pile number one pile number one really had a lot of uh, messages about having to focus on their dreams because it was not going to be just like um, you know your split energy your energy needs to be fully in <laughs> it's almost like again like a relationship you're in or you're out and some of you by the way it's not for everyone, but if you've always been into like in it's complicated type of status uh, relationship, this is going to start to shift with Sagittarius season. But your relationship to spirit is going to be a reflection of your relationship to everything else that manifests in your life. For example, if you're, um, you know, if you're sometimes on and then off, you know, it's different. Like, for example, let me try to illustrate and slow down. If you're into fitness, okay, and some of you might know nothing about fitness routine. I was a, you know, a personal trainer and I did like study medical uh, medicine, sports medicine. You know that there's like days where you invest your energy in building, okay? Sometimes I had like even days where I just worked my clients on their weakness. Oh my God, everyone hated it, but I was doing it also for myself. Like I had like, it was Saturday. Saturday was my weekday. <laughs> I called it my weekday uh, where the only exercise I had were all body parts where I had injuries. Um, but it was, that's when I decided to do this, that's actually when it really, I, sh I started shifting in my growth tremendously. And my chronic pain started to really um, dissipate, okay? I was doing a bunch of other stuff, but there was like the training and there was the rest day. And there was the nutrition and there was a lot of different compartments. So I feel like for you, there is this full investment that the universe is asking of you. Spirit wants to give you unconditionally. But if you're not fully invested, it's almost like you don't, like a part of you doesn't believe it's possible. Okay? So let's do it. <laughs> I almost feel like, you know, you need a little bit of boost or coaching, pile number three. Um, or maybe some of you, that's something that you're rehearsing, that you want to manifest, because you have to overcome your own weaknesses. I'm hearing the, the quote about, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. We have the soul retrieval. Wow. Okay, that really relates to the first part where, you know, there's certain experiences in your life that you need to maybe feel to heal 
And that's the frequency they're going to help you. Some of you, if you relate to this, I'm going to give you my soul retrieval frequency. Okay, what are we trying to retrieve here? What are we trying to retrieve? Help from above. Your connection to source? Your belief into source? Into, hmm, into being worthy? This is interesting. You know, I can relate to this. At some point, like, my life had, like, spun out of control, and it was so chaotic. And I can tell you now with, uh, with hindsight, you know, 20 years hindsight, <laughs> that the chaos that manifested in my life was very closely related to the chaos of my um, emotions, mental beliefs, and, as a result, physical manifestation, even to the point of breaking a lot of... Uh, having a lot of injuries, breaking bones, manifesting accidents and things like that. And as I was always a highly spiritual child, but at some point I started to start rebelling. Like I was like having <laughs> discussions with God and just being very upset. So if some of you, that's something that you resonate with, that's not for everyone, definitely work with the soul retrieval and uh, fragments because um, that's something that Spirit still needs you to believe in the unconditional flow that can flow through you in your life. It wants you to know this. And that's why you came to this reading. That's why you're still watching. If that's you, pile number three, drop me a ring. Drop me a ring as a sign of you being ready for this phase of receiving the unconditional love from the universe. You deserve it. The shark energy, the devil, living in darkness, bondage, and spiritual awakening. So that's what I was saying as far as some of you, maybe there was a lot of contrast in the things you had. It's not going to be for everyone, but some of you, maybe you had to manifest um, a karmic marriage. Okay, some type of karmic pattern um, that now you're going to call back as a wisdom, as something that you need to alchemize. The Queen of Pentacles, Earth Mother Protection, a noble soul. You're going to be able to, to ground the almost like the courage the bravery that it took you it's you feel like um some type of shadow worker light warrior alchemist of the soul someone that has really some knowledge with um with how to transmute and if you're stuck and i'm getting you know some different aspect of this message because some of you might still be struggling with the alchemy process of the past, go and check out those frequencies that I'm mentioning, especially if that resonates. Okay, last but not least, let's see what's left for you. Okay, love. See, you're getting there, pile number three. You're getting there. And that, you know, I feel that there's so much love that wants to flow through you. And love is going to be an energy that can manifest in any shape and form. So, for example, if you start, you know, uh, allowing this flow to support you, it's going to be able to flow and manifest in any version of what you desire. You got to believe in it. And I'm not, don't, I'm not discounting what I'm feeling that you had to experience but going through your spiritual awakening, going through the spiritual process, that's part of your message. You are getting there. You're getting into uh, that queen, that mastery energy of love. So that's source energy. Realize that everything you manifest through this flow is source energy, is God's energy. You are and hold goddess, God energy inside of you. 
Thank you so much, pile number three. That's all I have for the Sagittarius season. I'm sending you many blessings. If you have any questions, need spiritual guidance and support, you'll find all my offerings down below. And remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.